Hello friends and adventurers, and welcome to some bonus material for Sally Cat Plays Exile 3 Ruined World. So for those of us who've played through the entire game, or watched my Let's Play series, we know that the Vanatai are the ones behind the monster plagues on the surface. But what if we tell the bunker that somebody else is responsible? Did you ever know who created the monsters? Come back and tell me their name. Okay, so what if we go with the very first suspect? The Archmage Erica. She's certainly powerful enough to create some uh, serious plagues of monsters, don't you think? Erica is responsible for the attacks on the surface. Sad and worrying, but understandable. If it is necessary to battle her to regain our homeland, however, it is necessary. We will focus all of our energies on finding a way to fight this foe. Return here in a few days, and we should have something for you. Okay. So I'm going to make a fresh save. And then open up the editor. Now let me see... Where is the day counter? Can I mess with that? Edit day, yes. Warning, changing the day can have dramatically unexpected effects. Towns will reappear. People will be shifted around. The time limits on your jobs may expire. Back up your save file before doing this. But I'll just advance the calendar by a few days. Reopen Exile 3. Crash my emulator. Reopen Sheep Shaver. reload the game. Okay. And once again, Pathas and Enla are gone, but they did finish a weapon. We have made a magical device for you, but at great cost. Both Pathas and Enla put too much of their energy into it. Pathas is dead. Enla has left to try to recover. Their sacrifice, however, was not in vain. We have crafted a tool for you to use. Would you like a description? Erika is known to us to often rely on magical fire traps to fend off her foes. They are her main defense. We have created a series of amulets which will provide all of you with protection from fire of all sorts, and especially hers. Look for this device in the chest in the next room. We hope you can justify the horrible price we have paid for it. Interesting, so that is more of a defense for us than a weapon to damage Erica. The chest contains several round, smooth red amulets, one for each of you. You take them and put them on. You feel a pleasant, cool feeling while wearing them. Cool. Yeah. 
And here, instead of the thought crystal, we have cooling amulets. These amulets were prepared for you, in case you needed to somehow penetrate the Archmage Erica's defenses. They will protect you from her fire magic, and, to a lesser extent, from fire of all sorts. Hmm. So I have read in the comments somewhere that... Choosing the, quote, wrong weapon, and going for the cooling amulets instead of the anti vanati crystal soul weapon, can actually be a uh, pretty good early game strategy. So, as soon as you get access to the bunker, tell them that Erika is behind the attacks, then you get some fire protection for basically the whole game. Granted, you do have to actually fight off and possibly kill some crystal souls in the end game, But a power gamer wouldn't mind that, now would they? Erica has decided you may see her. So, armed with these cooling amulets... What can Erica do to us? Oh, that's interesting. Erica still has around 800 health, but unlike the final battle, she has a very large pile of spell points. And is immune to magic, and fire, and cold, and poison. 7th level mage and priest spells, no special ability. Decent attack, really high armor. Let's see what happens when we attack Erica. You draw your blades. Erica looks strangely unconcerned. As you approach, billows of flame erupt from all around you. The floor, walls, and ceiling vomit searing waves of heat upon you. In moments, the air around you is hot enough to reduce you to ash. But then nothing happens. The amulets protected you. Erica looks alarmed. Then she stands, readying herself for the challenging work of killing you. Erica undamaged, and also resists poison. This could take a little while. Maybe not quite that- maybe not quite as long as I feared. If she's immune to magic, then I probably can't slow her. I can do a major summon for grins and giggles. Ice lizards, yay! I can also summon a null bug to give me some anti magic. In fact, have another. I could always just cast anti magic field, of course, but. Where's the fun in that? Okay, everyone resists the slow group. Wonderful.
Also, I still have my quick ghast in uh, this save file instead of the alien beast. Ruby skeletons are really not going to do me much good. Oh, that's terrifyingly effective. Also, it seems the Doom Guards are hostile, but they can't move. Well, that was something. <laughs> With one last blow, you bring down the greatest wizard in exile. Her body collapses into a sad, unremarkable heap. The walls of her tower shimmer, and the rock begins to vibrate. Then, with a sudden, deafening roar, fire erupts everywhere. Quick fire appears all around you. A tower of flame instantly engulfs Erika's body. Her tower has begun to devour itself and everyone in it, it may be prudent to leave. Other consequences of her death remain to be discovered. Okay, just a little bit of quick fire. Ah, uh, nuts. My summons have attacked the Doom Guards, and now the Doom Guards are splitting. Erica dropped some stuff. This door has an imposing number of potent glyphs and sigils on it, and a large electrum keyhole. Unsurprisingly, the door is locked, and none of your keys work. Yeah, Erica dropped some stuff, but she seems to not have dropped an electrum key to allow me into her inner sanctum here. Fui. Well, that's some idea of what it looks like. There are some chests, a couple of maybe tome pedestals, bedchamber, bookshelf. I guess we just can't access this in normal gameplay. Or even cheesing gameplay with actually killing Erica. I would kind of like to see if an axe matter has anything to say, but I'm going to have to redo this fight a little bit to do so. And yep, without Erica, Erica's tower is gone. Hope you bought all the spells off her that you wanted before you did that. <laughs> but the Erica has decided you may see her message is still there. Well, how about that? And naturally, if you kill Erica, she will not be able to come and save you from Rentar Irno at the very end of the game. 
technically don't need her to, but it does make the final battle a bit more tedious. And by a bit, I mean kind of a lot. Also, Erica does not drop anything particularly noteworthy, just a uh, pretty good, very high-level monster loot. And Naxmander apparently doesn't care that we have just killed the most powerful mage in all of Exile. Yaha, okay. So after discovering how surprisingly easy it is to destroy Erica, What if we say we want to eliminate the dragons? Dragons, eh? They are strong and wise, but not invulnerable. Humans have slain two of them so far. Yeah, Pyrog and Motrax. Hmm, Motrax. We will see what we can do to make the task a little easier. We will focus all of our energies on finding a way to fight this foe. Return here in a few days, and we should have something for you. Okay. Now this time, instead of crashing Sheep Shaver, maybe I'll just try resting for a few days. And monsters nearby, phooey. Yeah, it's actually going to take a little less time to... quit edit the day count, and reopen. Alright then, so about that uh, anti-dragon weapon. Oh no, Pathas and Enla are gone, but we finished the weapon. We have made a magical device at great cost. Yes, I would like a description. We have made a magical sword. It can deliver devastating blows to all beings with reptilian blood. Including, in fact especially, drakes and dragons. Be careful not to misplace it. Look for this device in the chest in the next room, blah blah blah. The chest contains a beautiful steel sword, its pommel wrapped in shiny lizard skin. You pick it up reverently. Connie gets a broadsword. This sword is the Worm's Bane. One-handed weapon does extra damage against all lizards. The true classic among swords, about three feet long, wide bladed, the broadsword is the most commonly used blade. Interesting. Also, given that this is not quite endgame, I can give the worm's bane to whoever I feel like giving more experience to. But in order to use it effectively, I do have to go back up to the surface. So I can use Ernest to teleport closer to the dragons, but there is something in this region that's been niggling at me a little bit. Let's see if I can find it. Ah, yes. Sweat-inducing hike into a valley with many large toothy lizards basking themselves on the slopes above me. Aha! That was a little harder to find than it should have been. 
As you move further up into the valley, you see less of the lizards, but the ones you do see are much larger. You also often see large scorch marks on the ground. Here, Steven, let's have some fun with you today. You reach the end of the valley and find a large cave entrance, smelling of sulfur. You listen and hear nothing inside. Do you go in? You walk to the end of the cave and find a storehouse of gold. There is a pot of coins, the newest minted a century ago, sitting in the middle of an empty lair. You debate whether to take the coins or not. Really, what kind of adventurer are you? As you ponder the issue, however, you hear a throaty laugh. A small dragon, flanked by fire lizards, walks in to greet you. It laughs and says, At long last, I can add to my hoard. Then it attacks. At least the gold will be yours. And this throws us into a fight against giant lizards, fire lizards, and a drake. So I'll make Steven an avatar. Major blessing for everybody else. And a slow group. Oh, Connie doesn't actually have level 4 spells here. Huh. Mildly annoying. Okay, the regular lizards probably aren't even going to notice that I'm hitting them with a worm's bane because they already die so easy. Ooh, plus 50 damage. Let's see how fast the drake goes down. Two hits! You examine the body of the drake and find a delicate gold necklace stretched tight around its neck. Strange it didn't break. You remove it and take it with. So yeah, imagine fighting that when you're a lower-level party first exploring this region. That could be a fun time, I tell ya. Also, I've got a mystery necklace. Appears to be a fire orb necklace. Okay. But yeah, I remembered that particular special encounter from ages ago. I just was having some trouble finding it when I was recording that section of Let's Play about a year ago. And probably the closest city to the dragons will be Lorelei. Just check my maps. Yeah, dragons are out this away ish. A teleporter to Moon or Dorngas or anywhere near our foot racer could have been useful. Oh, hey, horses. Now, 
Now let's see if I can remember where all the dragons are. Actually, I think they're over here. decided to let us in, the fool. Now, was there any place in here I actually wasn't able to access? Aha. Uh -huh. Tomes and treasures that Koth doesn't want me to see. Well, no, I can't be having with that, now can I? We should have done a scry monster before attacking the dragon. <laughs> Cough had around a thousand hit points. High level, no spells, interesting. Supposedly has no special ability, but we all know he can breathe a ton of fire on us, because dragon. Pretty high attack power, though. Really, of all the dragons to not use magical attacks, I wouldn't expect Koth to be one. Okay, that's a lot of guardians. I was not expecting that. Son of a... I'll be right back, folks. Let's try this again, but better. I said better. <laughs> Should probably do some blessing, though. Steven, come on, you're avatar. Why are you missing? The guardians are in the walls. Koth, you're using the same trick that I think Sulphurus used back in Exile 1. Also, Koth is very much not immune to poison. Okay, I saw the quick guest was attacking Garnet, 
and I was about to ask, who charmed my quick guest when I remembered that it probably got hit by the shockwaves and didn't like it? Whoops. But the shockwaves are probably my best bet at uh, getting rid of all the guardians faster. I hope. Can I fireball some of those? Apparently not. Disappointing. And it matters about points anyway, fooey. Steven, please be better. And Garnet could really use an energy potion right now. Instead of shockwaving, I could cast another quick ghast outside of the ring of lava here. Finally, Stephen gets a hit in. One hit. Great. Finally killed a few of them. With a scream of fury and a mighty convulsion that makes the very stone of the chamber shake, the dragon dies. Its mighty body slams to the ground, lifeless. You have slain one of the few dragons alive in the world. What effects this will have in the long run, you can't even begin to guess. Okay, we've got one guardian left. Also, I'm going to have to recast my Firewalk. Aww, Koth is dead, but I still can't get in here. But I want to. <laughs> and also, the spirits are mad at me and will probably be... The ones breaking down the barriers there. So I think I would like to do some reviving.
second thought, do I really want to go in here with the barriers that are being broken by whatever's... the next big lizard. And of course, we all know that I can make Atherin angry just by attacking her babies. there is the shorter way in, which I thought was right there. Because I can kill out all of Atherin's children first doesn't mean I actually want to. Although Atherin is already hostile, and I don't know if that's because I attracted the attention of her offspring or if I killed Koth. Either way. Something tried attacking me over there, but I don't know what. Seriously, is there something in the wall again? reload that save again. Right then, where was I? Going after Athron. And using the secret way in first this time. And saving. Catherine is not friendly even when I don't draw the attention of her offspring, so yeah, I think the dragons know that one of their siblings has been killed. What is it trying to attack me there? Ah, black shades in the walls. Should I do a protection, or should I do a major blessing first? Hmm. 
There's a bunch of black shades, but they're all slowed now, and also Atherin is an avatar. That could be problematic. until Atherin's invulnerability wears off. Meanwhile... Atherin has 1,000 health, 600-odd magic points, lots of armor, lots of attack, 7th level mage and priest spells. This might take a bit more time than the Koth fight. Also because so many immunities. I think I just got hit for 75. So do I just need to start searching the walls for more black shades, or what? Can't leave town. Is there a secret passage back here? What? Why is your avatar spell so much more effective than mine? That's not fair. Haste. I can deal with that. after all. Actually, I can target this one because Guarded is currently invulnerable. Haha. <laughs> Is there another invisible enemy? 
around here somewhere. There it is. There it was. Okay, still got one or two more black shades. Dang it! At this point, I've put enough effort into Athrun that I can just edit per edit Pearl back to life later. Seriously, what was your first attack power? 10d20 <laughs> and then 8d10s. That, that's why I was taking holy crap amounts of damage. Ugh. I wasn't paying enough attention to the attack stats because of all the magic. My quick guest. That wasn't doing much good against you anyway. Yeah, I should have figured out that Athern is resisting my curses. Thank you. 
Finally. Okay, there is no secret passage here. I don't know why the game vaguely suggested I could leave through here. Well, that was awful. <laughs> And it uh, turns out I still had some scribane in my inventory, so I went ahead and used that for this fight. Do not normally recommend that will come with consequences. Eventually. Okay, Pearl, let's get all of your stuff back. And some extra gold to boot. And an unidentified potion, why not? Hmm, I'm still carrying exotic herbs for some reason. I'm at full health, thanks to the editor. I think I do want to step back outside to recover some spell points. Better. Uh, the potion was just a weak curing potion. Meh. So I don't actually know how long it takes for the consequences of Scribane usage to kick in. Seems like it does take at least a couple of days. Ooh, excess treasure storage. May have to investigate that a little bit later. You are intruding in the domain of Sulphurus the Dragon, but she grants you an audience to see me. She, he. I don't remember what uh, Sulphurus's gender is in this one yet. However. Sulphurus currently does not like me. Sulphurus, what are your stats? 2,000 health! And 600-something-odd magic points. And level 7 spells. And a crazy high attack stats. Oh boy. Well, the good news is the only enemy nearby seems to be Sulphurus. The bad news is, it's a Sulphurus. Also, Sulphurus is an avatar. This might take a little while. I'm not sure why I try.
But with Steven also being avatared, he is still I invulnerable, and so he doesn't care that Sulfurus has the martyr's shield on. to a mind duel, will that do me any good? I need a smoky crystal. Aha! Ooh, I kind of like that uh, worm's bane effect. But you know what I might like more? A couple of friends. Now that was just rude. You barely met them. But at least you're not invulnerable now. <sighs> Do I go for massive damage? Or do I step out so I can do some healing and some blessing? Um, excuse me, Sulphurus, you're kind of standing in an anti-magic field here. Shouldn't you be not capable of the spells?
Okay, this fight is getting really, really ridiculous. I think summoning the Ogre Mage may have been a mistake because area of effect spells. Occasionally, Steven is managing to get a hit in. Sulphurus is down to about half their health. Maybe I'll keep this going for a while. Sulphurus is being an incredible pain in the ass. Yeah, see, the demons don't care that they're getting me in their firestorming. And that Sulphurus takes no damage from fire. That was a bad idea. Okay, Pearl's dead again, and I'm losing patience for this. So as far as I've been able to discover, there is no way into this building in the Lair of Sulphurus, which looks Vanity style and potentially has some interesting magical stuff in it. is this. Hmm. I don't know, maybe I can try fighting Sulphurus again, but I don't really want to. Also, it could be like Erica, where there's a locked door and Sulphurus just doesn't drop the key for us. Editing Sally Cat here, I did end up going back to kill off Sulphurus for real. Turns out it is much easier when you focus on melee fighting and keep an anti-magic cloud over her at all times. It still takes a while, it took me a solid 10 minutes to beat her down like this. And I can confirm! She doesn't drop anything noteworthy. Killing the dragons is not really worth it. Now back to the looting. Oh hey, Gorgons. Gorgons just aren't that much of a threat when most of my party members have helmets of alertness. Of course, it might be better if I do so. Well, it might be better if I actually have magic points, huh?
So what does Sulfurus consider to be excess treasure? This iron box is part of a dragon's treasure trove. That makes opening it a dangerous proposition at best. Try to get it open anyway. You open the dragon's box. Several massive creatures appear to try to kill you. You're relieved. It could have been much worse. Okay, I see a gazer and an herb basilisk. And a mung demon. Ooh, that is annoying. rock, huh? But it's got an unusual weight, so I'll take it. Bow is probably a bow of cag. I don't think I'm still firewalking. Ooh, basilisks count as lizards. Mwahaha. Do a little healing while I still have spell points. loot. Mm. And let's identify the spoils here. Wand of rats. Oh boy. Infinite arrow. Ooh. It's a returning missile that does okay damage. And indeed a bow of cag, which when combined with the infinite arrow could be just a regular bow. Regular pretty lightweight bow. No bonus damage though, so nye. Uh, 
ruby, golem gem. Sapphire is probably the gem that I got from the horde here. Lodestone is cursed. Supposedly has a weight of 20 instead of 5. And I can't drop it because it's cursed. The gauntlets, however, are ogreish gauntlets, which are pretty nice because they grant extra strength. Is any of this worth ticking off a dragon? Not really. Though the fight of a couple of basilisks, gazers, and a mung demon honestly wasn't all that bad. <laughs> Yeah, it turns out a uh, creature having access to 7th level spells can be a real pain in the butt. Anyway, there is one more entity I want to try attacking, but I'm going to have to do that on another save file. And welcome back everyone to Prazak's Throne Room. Someone in the comments asked what happens if we try to attack Prazak, and honestly, I have no idea. I've never tried it before. <laughs> So let's give myself a decent head start. In fact, I might want to put a protection layer on. Because I don't know just yet what exactly Prazak is capable of. Prazak is actually very weak, but she's immune to damn near everything. <laughs> she's level 4, health 10, armor of 99. Hmm. So, am I about to start another epic battle? Or be horribly killed in a moment? Let's find out. As the last Empire Monarch was killed by exiles... The Empire Guards have been keeping a close eye on you. Alas, you've just confirmed their suspicions regarding your trustworthiness. Many guards converge upon you. Your deaths are slow and horrible. Well, that answers that question. And, uh, apparently there really is no way to get into the other half of Black Crag Fortress here. But I can at least do a magic map to show it off a little. So yeah, we've got quite extensive courtyards, some gardens, lots of quarters for soldiers, basically about what you would expect for a large and very well defended and fortified Location. Well, that, as they say, is that. That is basically everything I can think of to show off in this game. Once again, thank you everyone so much for watching this far, and I will see you in another series. Until then, have a good one, everybody.